White Death by Tim Vickery Chapter 1 The woman stood in front of the prison. The prison was a big, dirty building in the biggest town of a hot country. The woman was very hot, and she did not like the noise from all the cars in the road. She was an English woman, and she did not like hot countries or a lot of noise. She was tall, about fifty years old, with blue eyes and a long face. Her face was red, and she looked tired and angry. She knocked at the door of the prison. For a long time, nothing happened. Then a little window opened in the door, and a man looked out at her. Yes? What do you want? I want to see my daughter. It's very important. Name? Anna Harland. Is that your name or your daughter's name? It's my name. My daughter's name is Sarah Harland. You can't visit her today. Come back on Wednesday. No. I came from England to see her today. It's very important. She's going to court tomorrow. Please, take me to her, now. Wait a minute. The little window closed, but the door did not open. The woman waited in front of the door for a long time. A lot of people in the road looked at her. One or two young men laughed, but she did not move. She stood there in the hot road in front of the prison door and waited. After twenty minutes, the door opened. Come with me, the man said. The woman went in with him. It was dark in the prison, and at first she could not see very well. She walked for a long time, past hundreds of doors. Then the man opened one of them. In here, he said. You can have ten minutes. Anna Harland walked into the room, and the man went in after her. He closed the door behind him. There was a table in the room, and two chairs. On one of the chairs sat her daughter, Sarah. She was a tall girl, about nineteen years old with big blue eyes. Mother, she said, I'm very happy to see you. And she got up and began to run across the room to her mother. Sarah, Anna said, and put out her arms. But the man moved quickly and stood between them. No, he said to Anna. I'm sorry. I know you're her mother. You can talk, but that's all. Please sit down at the table. I am here to watch you. The mother and daughter sat down at the table. Anna's hands were near Sarah's on the table. She looked carefully at her daughter. 
Sarah's dress and face were dirty. She's tired and unhappy, Anna thought. Sarah, what happened? she said. We have ten minutes to talk, no more. Tell me, please, quickly. I want to help you. Sarah looked at her mother. Oh, mother, I'm happy you're here. I wanted you to come. Mother, I... I didn't do it. It isn't true. Please believe me. Of course I believe you, Sarah. But tell me about it. What happened? Quickly, begin at the beginning. Yes, but I don't know. When did it begin? I don't know. I don't understand it. Why did the police arrest you? When did they bring you to this prison? Last week, I think. Yes, last week. At the airport, when we arrived. The police stopped us and looked in our bags. Then... Sarah looked down at the table. She's crying, Anna thought. She's very unhappy. What happened then, Sarah? Her mother asked. They... They said there were drugs in my bag. Then they took me into a room and told me to take my dress off. They looked for more drugs, but they found nothing. Then... Then they brought me here. I see. Where were the drugs then? Where did they find them? Oh, they didn't tell you. Sarah stopped crying. She looked up, and there was a smile on her face. But it was not a happy smile. The drugs were in a tube of toothpaste. A toothpaste tube with drugs in it. Heroin, not toothpaste. And you didn't know about it? No, mother, of course not. Do you think I clean my teeth with heroin? Anna Harlan smiled. It was difficult to smile, because she was afraid. But she smiled because she wanted to help her daughter. I know you don't clean your teeth with heroin. You have very good teeth, Sarah. But what about Stephen? Did he know about the heroin? Did he put it in the toothpaste tube? Stephen? No. Why do you ask about Stephen, mother? Well, is he in prison too? You said us and our bags. Did the police arrest him too? Oh, no. Sarah's face was unhappy. No, I wasn't with Stephen, mother. You see, Stephen and I, well, we aren't friends now. I left him about two months ago, and then I met 
Hassan. Hassan? Yes. I was with Hassan at the airport. Stephen was on the plane too. I don't know why. But he wasn't with me. It's Hassan. He was with me. Hassan's important to me now, not Stephen. Anna looked at her daughter. I see. And did the police arrest this Hassan too? Is he in prison? Yes, he is. They arrested him, but I can't see him. I asked them. I wanted to see him, but they said no. Mother, I'm sure Hassan didn't know about the heroin. He's a good man. He didn't know, I'm sure. Then why was the heroin in your bag, Sarah? I don't know, Mother. I don't know. The man looked at the clock in the room. I'm sorry, Mrs. Harland, he said, but that's ten minutes. It's time to go. Anna Harland stood up slowly. All right, she said. But don't be afraid, Sarah. I'm coming to the court tomorrow. Yes, mother. Sarah said. Thank you. The police are bringing Hassan to court tomorrow too, I think. You can see him there. He's a good man, mother, and I'm sure he didn't know about the drugs. Perhaps, Anna said. She walked slowly to the door and then stood by the door and looked at her daughter again. Sarah, you are telling me the truth, aren't you? Sarah began to cry again. Yes, mother, of course I am. I always tell you the truth. You know that. Anna smiled. Yes, Sarah, she said quietly. Yes, I believe you. She went through the door, and the man went out after her. Sarah sat quietly at the table in the room and looked at her hands. Yes, she thought. I told you the truth, mother. I always tell you the truth. But I didn't tell you everything. She put her head in her hands. Chapter 2 Anna Harland left the prison and went to talk to the police. She waited a long time in a small office. But after an hour, a policeman came into the room. He was a big man, about fifty-five years old, with brown eyes and a nice smile. He moved very slowly and quietly. Good afternoon, Mrs. Harland, he said. My name is Detective Inspector Aziz. I arrested your daughter three days ago. I'm very sorry for you. 
This is a very unhappy thing for a mother. It's a very unhappy thing for my daughter, Inspector, Anna said angrily. Because she didn't do it. She's innocent, you know. She knows nothing about those drugs. Detective Inspector Aziz looked at her carefully for a minute. He did not know many English women. She has an interesting face, he thought. Very blue eyes and a long nose. She is not afraid of me, and she is not crying. Perhaps she wants to know the truth. Perhaps she can help me, too. Well, Mrs. Harland, he said slowly, it's difficult for me. Is your daughter telling the truth? Is she innocent? Because the drugs were in her bag, you know. I know, Anna said. But she was with a young man, Hassan. She doesn't know him very well, I think. Tell me about him, please. I want to know. Inspector Aziz smiled. All right, he said. But first, tell me about your daughter. Why was she on that plane? Why did she come to this country? Tell me. Anna Harland looked at him. He's a nice man she thought. He listens to people. Perhaps he wants to help. Perhaps he can understand Sarah. Do you have daughters? she asked. Yes, the inspector answered. Two. Then perhaps you can understand. Anna said. Sarah is nineteen. She finished school last year, and she worked for six months in a hospital to get some money. Then she and her boyfriend, Stephen, visited a lot of countries. They went to Greece, Turkey, India, Australia. And now they're here. They're young, and they want to see new countries, and new towns, and new people. That's all. I see, the inspector said. But sometimes young people do things, bad things because they are in a different country, and they need money. Not Sarah, Anna said, and not heroin. Sarah worked in a hospital, and she knows about heroin. She knows it can kill people. I'm a doctor. And she wants to be a doctor, too. I see, the inspector said again. He looked at her and thought, but he said nothing. Now, Anna said, tell me about this young man, Hassan. All right, the inspector said. He took some papers from the table 
and began to read to her. But we don't know very much about him. He is a rich boy, from a good family. His father has two or three shops, I think. And the police in his town know him, too. Last year, his father gave him a new car. A very fast car. And listen to this. One day, he hit a police car, and the police car went into the river. What a story! His father bought a new car for the police. His father has a lot of money. The inspector smiled, but Anna looked unhappy. Oh dear, she said, that's not very good. No, he said, it isn't good. But this story about the heroine is worse, much worse. I don't like this story. Chapter 3 Next morning, Anna Harland went to the court. She was first there. She sat in the courtroom and waited. A lot of people came in, and she saw a man and his wife. Perhaps they're Hassan's father and mother. Anna thought, but she did not want to talk to them. The lawyers came in next, with a lot of papers. They sat at a table in front of her and talked quietly. Those two lawyers, Anna thought, they're old friends. But one of them wants my daughter to die, and one wants her to be free. After the lawyers, the jury came in. Twelve people, men and women. They sat down and watched the lawyers. They looked at Anna and then talked quietly about her. These people don't look very important, she thought. But they are the most important people here. They're going to say, she did it, or she didn't do it. And then Sarah comes home to me, or she dies. She watched their faces carefully. Then some policemen came in. Inspector Aziz saw Anna and smiled at her. But Anna did not talk to him because Sarah came in at the same time. She looked afraid, and her face was very white. She looked across the courtroom, saw her mother, and gave her an unhappy smile. There were two policemen behind Sarah, but Anna did not look at them. She looked at the tall, dark young man next to Sarah, Hassan. He's about twenty years old, Anna thought. He's very tall. But he has a nice face and very beautiful 
dark eyes. Sarah likes him, and I can understand that. But he looks very unhappy too, and afraid. His hands are moving all the time. Hassan looked at Sarah and smiled. She smiled back at him. Anna wanted to talk to Sarah, but just then a policeman said loudly, All stand, please. Everybody stood up, and the judge came into the courtroom. He went to his chair and sat down. The police lawyer began. These two young people came into our country last week, he said. The young man lives in this country, and the young woman is English. At the airport, the police looked in their bags, and they found three tubes of toothpaste. These tubes of toothpaste. He had the three tubes in his hand, and he looked at them. Everybody could see them. But are they tubes of toothpaste? he asked. No, men and women of the jury, they are not. Oh, no. There is no toothpaste in these tubes. There is heroin in them. Yes, heroin. A bad, dirty drug. Perhaps the worst drug. People die from this drug. The White Death, they call it. The lawyer stopped and looked at the jury. He waited for a minute or two. The courtroom was very quiet. Then he began again. But why, you ask me? Why did these two young people have this heroin in their bags? I can't tell you. Because heroin is one of the most expensive drugs, too. They can sell these tubes of heroin in our country for perhaps 80,000 pounds. Eighty thousand pounds. Easy money. And men and women of the jury, many people in our country, young people, school children too, take this drug. At first it's exciting and they feel happy. But then they need more and more heroin. And they need more money to buy the drug. They leave their homes and families. They take more heroin. And more. They can't stop. Soon the drug begins to kill them. And in the end, they die. The white death. It's not a quick death. And it's not an easy death. Yes, men and women of the jury. Many young people and children. Your children and my children, remember. Die because of this drug. The lawyer stopped again.
The jury watched him and waited. He is very good, Anna thought. Very, very good. He's telling the jury an exciting story, and they like him. But it isn't good for Sarah. The lawyer walked across the courtroom and stood in front of the jury. But, my friends, he said to the jury, we have a law in this country, and the law is not difficult to understand. When people bring heroin into this country, they bring death too. We need to stop these people. And how can we do that? The answer is easy. The law for these people is death. The lawyer walked back to his table. Now, please look at these two young people here in this court, he said to the jury. They brought heroin into this country. The airport police are going to tell you about it. Please listen carefully. It's not a long story. And remember, the law is death. The police lawyer sat down, and an airport policeman went to the front of the courtroom. Anna felt ill. She looked at Sarah. Sarah was white-faced and very afraid. Anna closed her eyes. Sarah, she thought. Oh, Sarah. The police lawyer stood up again. Please tell the court about Sarah Harland and Hassan he said to the airport policeman. Yes, sir, said the policeman. I found two tubes of toothpaste in the girl's bag and one tube in the young man's bag. All three tubes had heroin in them. Thank you. The police lawyer sat down, and Mr. Cheng Sarah's and Hassan's lawyer stood up. What did Sarah Harlan say when you found the heroine? he asked. Nothing, sir. She began to cry. I see. Was she afraid? The policeman thought for a minute. I don't know, sir. Perhaps she was, yes. And she said nothing? Are you sure? The policeman thought again. Well, yes, sir. I think perhaps she said, This isn't my toothpaste. This is all wrong. I see. And what about the young man, Hassan? What did he say? Well, sir, he was very angry. He said, It's not heroin. That's not true. You put it there. I see. Thank you. Now tell me, why did you look in these two young people's bags? You don't usually look in everyone's bags. There isn't time. The policeman thought again. Well, no, sir, we don't. I... I'm afraid I can't tell you, sir. 
What did you say? Mr. Cheng asked very angrily. Of course you can tell me. This is a court of law. He looked at the judge. This is a very important question. We need an answer. The judge looked at the airport policeman. I'm sorry, he said. Please answer the question. The court needs to know the answer. Yes, sir. Well, you see, there was a telephone call. Someone telephoned me before the plane arrived. The telephone caller said, There's some heroin on the plane. A young man and a young woman are carrying it. I see, Mr. Cheng said. He smiled. That's very interesting. And who made this telephone call? I don't know, the policeman said. It was a man, and he talked in English. I don't know his name. Suddenly, Anna heard a noise. She looked behind her at the door of the courtroom. A tall young man came into the back of the room. Anna knew him at once. It was Stephen, Sarah's old boyfriend. A policeman took him to a chair near Anna. He saw Anna, and for a second he looked afraid. But then he smiled and sat down next to her. Mrs. Harland, he said quietly, it's good to see you. When did you arrive? Yesterday, she said. Why are you late? I couldn't find the court, he answered. He looked very unhappy. Tell me how to help, he said. I want to help Sarah, but what can I do? I was on the plane too, but I couldn't help her. I don't want her to die. Stay with me, young man.